We made this free and open source app to help people learn programming, like the basics in Godot. And like every app that has a lot of user interface in Godot, it has a little problem, NotePass. This is how we wrote it in Godot 3.4. And you can see we have to get fairly long paths to many nodes. And if you go through all the code, there's a ton of that. What's the problem? The problem is that if you want to move a node, for example, let's take my run button and say I want to swap it with the solution button here. If I try to run the scene, I get errors. Why? Because I moved the nodes, but I did not update their paths up there. There was a solution to that. Uh, I'm going to move back the solution button to only have changed the run button. And we could use the find node function, which would find the node by name. And then I can run the scene and I can move the run button anywhere in my tree and it just works. The problem is there's a performance cost to using this. And uh, when your app gets really big, it can slow down the loading of new screens. So you don't necessarily want to do that. Thankfully, in Godot 3.5, there's now a new feature that solves both performance and uh, moving the node anywhere in the scene. Uh, when you right click a node, you get this access a scene unique name option that you can turn on or off. I'm going to turn it on for the run button. And you can now use a new syntax to get the node. You can actually just click and drag the node onto your script. That's another nice feature. And you'll see now it gets the node but puts a little person sign in front of it. And the editor will automatically detect the nodes that use this feature and those that do not. So if you're using the feature, it will put the person sign. Otherwise, it will put the full path. This is really nice because now I can move my run button anywhere and run the scene. So I'm changing its position, its location there. And you can see that the app just works. The good thing about this is that the performance is great. The node gets cached, so you don't have to worry about performance loss. Now, a limitation I found in Godot 3.5 is you have to go right click and do that for every node. If I try to select multiple and turn on access scene unique name, you'll see it only affects the first one. Then you also have to go to your script editor and then you have to go replace every button or node with which you are using that. In Godot, you will have to replace the node paths one by one. But if you use a code editor like Visual Studio Code or Emacs like I'm using, you can do things faster. First, every scene in Godot is stored as text. So I'm going to open the code editor right there. Allow me to maximize it. And uh, I'm going to search for my run button which um, lists all the properties stored in the scene. And this new feature, when you activate it, adds a line unique name and owner equals true below the node. So you can copy this line and you can go to all the other nodes in your scene and just add the line. So I'm gonna go do that for the buttons at least, the con console uh, button here and uh, continue and solution button. And when I do that and head back to the scene and reload, uh, then you can see that the person signs display next to all six of my buttons. And then maybe I have a couple left like the this button, DMF but, DFM button and um, this locked overlay. The next thing I can do is head back to my script editor and I'm going to go to the code editor script and I can use search and replace to quickly replace these paths. So I'm going to select the lines where I want to do search and replace. And my editor, I can type regular expressions to search for patterns and replace them. You can do that in pretty much any code editor. Now I can't teach you rejects, but I'm going to run you through the one that I'm using here. So I type backlash uh, dollar sign to first find the dollar sign, then dot plus to say I want to target every character after the dollar sign, right? So it goes to the end of the line, but I don't want to go to the end of the line. I want to go to that slash here, and then I want to capture that word because I will need to keep it. So the way that I do that is I type backslash slash. This allows me to target a slash character. 
right? And because uh, we have this pattern, take everything until the last slash, right? This is what the, the pattern I've written means. Then I'm going to create parentheses, which allow me to capture a text match. And I'm going to type backslash W plus, uh, which corresponds to all the letters plus underscore, uh, which allows me to capture the node names like slice editor, run button, etc. Then I'm going to replace that with dollar quotes. Uh, I'm going to get the um, node name I captured in the parentheses and closing quote. And I need to also add a person sign before the node name. And when I press enter, I've instantly replaced a bunch of nodes. And well, with a code editor, you can do that uh, throughout a project very quickly. So you can save a lot of time updating your node paths to Godot 3.5. If I go back to Godot 3.5, I'm lacking just the slice editor, I think, there. And I can then run my scene and everything's working. Now I can take that code editor and move it uh, in the button columns, for example. It's very weird, but I can totally do that. Um, now if I run the code, it still works because the node is still there. Uh, it's using this new feature that makes it so I don't have to care about the node path anymore. A limitation of this feature is that you can only get these nodes that use a person sign from the same scene and script. You can't go something like you make an instance of the code editor in your in your game or your app and go code editor dot get node and use the person sign. You have to expose them with an already variable like I've done here for this slice editor. Uh, now a good thing in Godot 3.5 is that you can now control click and drag a node name and it's going to create this already variable for you. This makes creating those variables pretty fast in the first place. If you want more quick videos like these on new features in Godot 3.5, please let us know in the comments below. The app is also free and open source if you want to check out how it was made or recommend it to someone who's new to programming. You'll find a link in the description below. Be creative, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.